Lesson 13.3a, using theoretical probability to make a quantitative prediction. Back in Module 12, we discussed quantitative data and predictions. Quantitative, it's an adjective, and it means concerned with quantity or quantities. A quantitative prediction is a prediction based on data that can be measured or counted. I'm going to have a link to 12.4c if you missed it or if you need to remember. We can make quantitative predictions based on theoretical probability just as we did with experimental probability in video 12.4c. We'll use proportional reasoning to solve a problem. If our proportion is 2 tenths out of 100 tries, we use proportional reasoning and think, well, 10 times some number is 100, that would be 10 times 10. We multiply the numerator by the same thing, that would be 20. We know x is equal to 20. Here it's telling us to use proportional reasoning to solve the problem. We roll a standard number cube 120 times. Predict how many times we'll roll a 2 or a 3. Now there are six possible numbers on a number cube, so each number has a 1 of 6 chance of occurring. Since we need to predict two numbers, 2 or 3, the chance of occurring is 2 times 1 6, or 2 6, which can be simplified to 1 3rd. The first method, we're going to set up a proportion. The second method, we're going to set up an equation. So remember that 1 3rd and that we're going to roll the cube 120 times. Method 1, we set up a proportion. We know that the chance of occurring as a 2 or 3 is 1 3rd. We're going to roll 120 times. We have 1 3rd is equal to x over 120. We ask ourselves 3 times some number is equal to 120. That would be 40. We multiply the numerator by the same amount. We get 40. We know x is equal to 40. For method 2, setting up an equation, our prediction is going to equal the probability of rolling a 2 or 3 multiplied by the number of events. The probability of rolling a 2 or 3 is 1 3rd. The number of events is 120. We're going to multiply 1 3rd times 120. Some of you can just do the 1 times 120 and put it over the 3. Some of you might find it easier to put the 120 as a fraction greater than 1 and use 1 as a denominator. Then you can multiply straight across. We get 120 over 3. 120 thirds. 120 divided by 3 is 40. We know our prediction is 40. Sarah works in sales at a department store. She has an equally likely chance of being assigned to either the children's clothing, women's clothing, luggage and purse, or perfume section each day she works. If she works 32 days, about how many days should she expect to work the perfume section? Well, there's four possible sections, children's clothing, women's clothing, luggage and purses, or perfume. And the probability of being assigned to perfume is one-fourth. It's one out of four. But what if she works 32 days? How many days should she expect to work in that perfume section? We can write a proportion to find how many days out of 32 days that Sarah will be assigned to the perfume section. The probability of working perfume is one-fourth. Perfume is one out of four possible sections. Our proportion is one-fourth is equal to x over 32. We think four times some number is 32. Well, that would be four times eight. We multiply the numerator by the same number. We know x is equal to eight. Sarah can expect to be assigned to the perfume department about eight days out of 32 days. Now here it's telling us to predict how many times we might roll a number greater than two if we roll a standard number cube 180 times. Now be careful, it says greater than two, so it doesn't include two. We think numbers greater than two on a number cube would be three, four, five, six. That would be four possible numbers out of six numbers. 
four possible numbers out of six numbers would be 4 6, which simplifies to 2 thirds. We can write an equation. Our prediction is equal to the probability that it's greater than 2, and we multiply it by the number of events. We know the number of events is 180, isn't it? We do 2 thirds times 180. 2 times 180 is 360. We have 360 thirds. 360 divided by 3 is 120. So greater than 2, about 120 times out of 180 rolls. Here's our last one. We flip a fair coin. It's a coin with heads on one side and tails on the other side. 100 times. About how many times could we expect tails to appear? We think there's only two possible outcomes, heads or tails. We have a one of two, or one half chance, it will land as tails. Out of 100 times, we find one half is equal to some amount over 100. And we think two times 50 is equal to 100. We multiply the numerator by the same thing. We find that x is equal to 50. We can expect tails about 50 times out of 100 flips, or half of however many number of flips we did. If we did 50 flips, then we, we can expect tails to be 25 times. If we did 1,000 flips, half of that would be 500 times. We finished the first part of the lesson. We're going to move on to the second part of the lesson using theoretical probability to make a qualitative prediction. We only have a few more videos and we'll be finished with seventh grade math. If you've watched all of them, I'm very proud of you. Please join me for the second part of the lesson and have a great day. Bye.